Uh, motion to accept the minutes as printed for the special meeting of August the 8th. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so it's passed. Caroline. Uh, okay. Well, I have uh, a couple of comments, I guess, from people in the audience that they've made to me. And I would ask if you would like to hear from them first or you not. first. All right. Yes. Very fine. So thank you for letting me come to follow up from our meeting the other week. Thank you. Thank you. What we have done, we put costs together here and the phasing, and I took the comments from the public, and I apparently have misunderstood, I apologize, I misunderstood some of the things that you all, as Planning Commission, were saying um, related to considerations for the plan, and I will um, uh, uh, speak to those. So uh, the first one, before we start flipping through here, is that um, the considerations for the two phases of the plan, meaning uh, I was focused on our discussion in the spring on sort of the build-out scenario. I did not, in this the document last time, include the sort of the initial consideration of leaving the southern side of the corridor in place. So I've illustrated that as sort of an initial consideration so that we've carried that through. In all, that doesn't, um, that would affect some of the acquisition costs in phase one. That would affect some of the other sort of phase four um, sort of building types of things and driveway alignments and whatnot. But the other costs for actually relocating the road and doing the majority of that stream realignment um, wouldn't change. So I think from a perspective of um, the acquisition types of pursuits, that would shift some efforts to be a um, lesser number. But still, I think it was my understanding, and I um, uh, took that uh, we were focused sort of on that build out picture. So the other graphic for the shorter term uh, element of the southern side of the corridor staying as is, is included. So I apologize for that. The second one is, um, I did not understand uh, clearly, also for uh, the inclusion of on street parking on the, in the corridor. And so consideration for that. I think that in the short term, uh, if Baldwin Street were realigned and there were parking that was included all along it on uh, the westbound side, that could work. I think that at some point though, there probably, maybe some of that in the build-out scenario could be removed in that centerpiece so because you're going to have parking underneath the buildings so the necessity of having all of that on-street parking I'm really looking at it quite frankly as even that nine foot width for parallel parking if some of that nine foot width can be used for absorption space rather than you know uh, paved space or constructive space that was the ultimate aim so we've considered that, and we can get some of the parking on there. Um, so other items from uh, the public uh, that were uh, highlights include sort of this culvert discussion uh, in the commercial uh, street intersection, and then also from our work um, in talking with the staff uh, last week, uh, and they had a man. Let's go on this one. They had a. Um, meeting with DEP last Thursday. And following that meeting, uh, Lori, Joe, and I were able to go over, I think, some quite exciting points in that um, the possibilities of the ball field area south of, um, east of us, um, and having that be part of this solution 
is getting its green light of um, meaning that I think the borough has some um, next step possibilities of um, being able to do some engineering in that ball field area to help contribute as each of these are pieces that is an additional piece that is expanded uh, really in the last few days of getting a green light. So that's exciting. And we were going to refer to that sort of as the southern um, part of the project. So we now have in consideration for a northern piece of the project, which is commercial street intersection and culvert uh, expansion. That's coordination with the core of engineers, as well as then Allegheny County with the bridge redesign. And from some of the engineering discussion uh, that has happened, a matter of those culverts being a minimum or trying to target, I'll say, I think targets are the word, uh, 60 feet in minimum of uh, width. So for reference purposes, if we were to um, start, well, we start to get into the drawings, just remember the 60 foot dimension, that's a significant span. Um, for water in which to, to flow, what right? What is it currently? Um, it's about 30. It's, a, it's about half. Okay. Right, so we've got um, the notion, I'm going to say, of doubling or working towards doubling that sort of flow capacity in the northern piece. We have the area where we're uh, introducing this realignment where we get to our minimum dimension is 60 feet. And then in areas, then we widen out to even towards 100 feet of capacity or um, width. And then um, the bridge redesign for actually um, where Baldwin would be coming sort of in that new alignment would also current Baldwin uh, Street bridge where it touches McLaughlin. As we know today, as you drive out there today, that bridge would also then need to be redesigned to, I mean, right, in terms of getting that width. The uh, southern piece of the ball field being lowered is um, the, almost the, the, becoming the first element that's moving forward and with reality. And then um, consideration for even uh, lands further into uh, you know, further down the um, McLaughlin Run, um, whether we are approaching in Upper St. Clair or, or what have you. So a lot has happened in the last four days <laughs> um, that I want to reflect upon and give you reference for this. So uh, the ball field is definitely moving forward. Is it from that of it? We met with the DEP on Thursday, and all of the ideas and proposals that we presented to them were all positive uh, to them. We just have, um, were given um, ideas of what type of permits that we had to submit to them. But um, yes, we can do all of those projects, so. Does that, does that approval assume, well, I know this isn't the thrust of today's conversation, but does, does that approval assume that they're agreeing, yeah, this is going to substantially improve future mm -hmm. events? That, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that as being part one, our southern piece of reality, part one, right? Um, then I think as we are ready to move forward, it's a matter of, all right, let's get back in discussions with Allegheny County associated with that bridge redesign and considerations for that on, in our project area, meaning the cent I'm calling that central is this piece. And then how that affects even the culvert design um, to roads up. And that's where that redesign instead of the 90 degree angle mm -hmm. of the water. So I think that's, that's a lot of progress. Yeah, and that's Most September 10th. We'll be back yes. with them September 10th. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. For this 60 foot cutting down the 90 degree. Right. Mm -hmm. And what that means in terms of sort of the terminus of this central area, right? So, or the, well, the water to flow faster. Correct. So we're on, we're on the, literally. 
And so um, from a perspective of uh, just going through here, I would like to um, go back to page um, uh, 15. Okay. So uh, last time we were talking about what is this really, this breaking down of the consideration for the road construction, for the stream construction, and then for the other areas sort of, of um, physical improvements. And so from a perspective of hard costs, thinking about the about uh, 9.5, 9.6 million dollars in hard costs for the road realignment. And what this does also uh, need to think about is that based on some of the funding um, sources with uh, federal funds or, and that means also through PennDOT, you know, in terms of these types of things, and we're translating that also into county efforts, all those kinds of things, that um, our most recent experience over in this summer um, in discussions with PennDOT is that there's roughly about 35% um, soft costs associated with some of these projects, and that would be including sort of the architecture and engineering and the inspections. So from a perspective of looking at uh, demolition, looking at grading, in erosion and sedimentation controls, uh, sort of the road realignment, the two traffic uh, points of access, meaning the circle, the roundabout, and the uh, traffic islands um, that would be uh, also in coordination with the county's bridge effort, um, sort of driveway insurance, sort of you know, these driveway alignments, uh, sidewalks. If there is anything done with sort of bike lane that's very minor, but still in terms of multimodal and sort of its designation with a Cheryl or that type of thing, and public uh, transit stops, um, that's the 9.5, 9.6 and hard costs. We did not, because of the bridge discussions to come very soon, we put that below the line so that those, because those two efforts, depending on also some of those are outside of, I'm going to say, bridge bills. Um, purview, uh, we can come back with that, uh, or you, you all can. Now, on the right um, side, when we're taking a look at things that are associated with not just talking about paving purposes, right, but how this is contributing, how this is coordinated with some of the other grant opportunities or fund opportunities that are available, We've um, taken a look sort of at uh, some of these types of things um, and other opportunities. Some of them are federal, some of them are, are state level. And identifying here uh, some considerations. So everything from PennDOT's uh, tech to um, there's a Green Streets, Green Jobs, Green Towns program. The, so on that one, um, we put it, the emphasis of federal there, but uh, you know, applications close and open at certain points in time. So this was trying to give the borough the element of where can we start to even look at some of these dogs specifically related to these kinds of projects, okay? So from a perspective of, um, uh, there's, there's one of them here, that how can you align even some of the dollars that you're able to have as cash to match you know, any sort of requirement. And then, obviously, as you do on many of your other efforts, how can you use those dollars to even match other dollars? So it's sort of this cumulative effect. All right, the next page, page 16. This is focused really on um, the phase three uh, piece that is the restoration. Now, this one is a much lower cost phase at about, uh, I'm rounding up here, $1.5 million of hard costs, still identifying that there are probably at least 35% soft costs to that. And in this phase, though, one of the numbers that is not in, 
included, one of the bigger numbers that is not included is the grading because that we are assuming is happening as part of phase one. So we've got the cubic, we've calculated there are about 10,000 cubic yards of soil that would potentially be removed from the corridor um, with the road realignment and preparing for the stream restoration. So when that, some of that can be used for fill, but a majority of that we're anticipating is actually going to be taken off site and that we know is a more costly number. So from that perspective, um, thinking about what that uh, would entail. All right, so, and similarly on this page, there are actually many more funding sources for this type of project. And this is one I think where um, maybe you've taken you know, part in some of these and you can use that sort of record that you have in pursuing potential, like a next phase of something or an expansion of that past effort that could be helpful. But I think there are some other ones on here in sort of coordination with DCNR that we've been taking a look at um, and would offer out, you know, some of them. Um, we know a few of them are even limited to, you know, if the population is under 10,000 or those kinds of things and we have to um, make sure, you know, all of those criteria fit. But from a perspective of, we did include Brownfield on this one and it, the reason that we did is because in part we don't know all of the conditions of the subsurface of some of those properties and with the activities that have taken place on the surface, the possibility that some of those may be in that condition we think, you know, could be um, uh, the scenario or this could be the case. So being able to explore that, I should say, as the scenario is something that we would recommend as well. So um, from that perspective, um, considering these. And then the last one on page four is... Page four. I'm oh, sorry, phase four, thank you. Page 17 page. <coughs> is taking a look at sort of the development side. And if this is something that's pursued, again, in the longer term, that we would have the opportunity to think about sort of about 9.25 million in hard costs in this area that does not include the building, does not include any I mean, structure, construction, or parking, but actually sort of the site elements to that contributing again to sort of this infrastructure solution. And so um, from a perspective of um, adding in um, I'm going to say some of the amenities to this uh, piece. If some of these would want to move over to say phase two, when you're talking about sort of sidewalk construction, I mean you can do the preparation of the utilities, but maybe the physical improvements uh, above the surface, meaning the amenities improvements, are um, yet to come. We've put those in this uh, phase, like lighting. I mean that, that's one of the ones I was um, thinking about in my, in my mind. So again, uh, some of these things. I'm imagining it, um, that also ultimately as part of building construction, um, that if it were desirable and wanting to be encouraged that green roofs as part of the solution would also come into play here, but that again could be probably more along the lines of the um, building. To let you know, um, I made mention of the last time, let's see here, on page, yeah. on page 12, the three, uh, these four drawings, the top left is a concept drawing and then the other three are actual construction drawing or construction photos. This stormwater solution, um, along a three, four lane road in an urban environment is about 450 feet long. Um, 
the public engineering estimated cost for that was uh, just over one million dollars, one million twenty-nine thousand or something. So I mean, it's round to about just above one million dollars for that. Well, in terms of this being a green infrastructure solution, so I just want giving you the background as to what we were just on the last page in phase four, and we had those green infrastructure um, costs estimated out. We were considering the amount of area or amount of length that we were looking at. And we have um, quite a more area than the, that this project constructed at the 450 feet. But we've taken those as actually 2017, 2018 construction um, numbers and applied them to this. So uh, from that perspective, um, we, we have some real elements of uh, real uh, construction to reflect upon. So from a perspective of uh, incorporating uh, the parking um, along the corridor, uh, we, gained, we were able to gain uh, about 12 spaces in the long term. We probably could get that about 15 to 16 in a shorter term solution um, if desired. So uh, again, on street spaces. And then the reflection of um, that uh, existing condition as you have it from the southern side of the corridor, <coughs> remaining as is, and keeping those um, drive, keeping those driveways aligned. So um, those take the elements from the meeting. The uh, when you look at those totals, as you have probably um, quickly done the math in your head, um, we are around. A, 20 million of hard costs, and then we've added on the soft cost to that, so that is in our um, range of the 30 million dollars. Um, and so I think that is consistent with what we were identifying. The bridges, as I called out, are sort of those below the line items because that is something that has surfaced in the, uh, over the course of this summer, um, and I think in the next couple of weeks when those bridge. Um, discussions continue, we'd be able to supplement that into um, what you're, you're thinking about here. We have uh, also wanted to identify that um, on page four, but we would hope that it is possible for the uh, staff to do, for Joe and Lori and all of um, the people gathered at the table for some of these context discussions that we've got the southern project where we're calling out is for the ball field area. So uh, similarly, if you would want to pull things out and just sort of, um, I'm going to say, as we, you know, we've got multiple stages of these books, right, I mean, from these, these points, mm -hmm. that if that southern, if you want to call it southern, you want to call it eastern, whatever you want to call it, but if we can keep sort of that language consistent, I think, then it goes along with everything that you're doing and you'd be able to make that reference. And then, of course, then the northern project being the one where the culverts and those kinds of things happen above sort of, uh, I'm calling it all that sort of bridge structural piece. And this one looking, um, focusing on the stream realignment area. So um, the last piece to this is uh, Bob Fryer and I have had a uh, chance to um, have some conversation uh, this evening um, about the, some of the things that he's been thinking about as well. I think he'd like to be able to share those um, with you. Um, what I have um, good news of our support, I think, Bob, when, you, uh, when he speaks, there are a couple of things I'd just like to make reference to say either how we have some consistency with those thoughts or we've had some alternative thoughts to those because he's uh, been also able to talk to have some additional engineering input on his end and sort of how that goes along with what um, Joe and I have been able to you know, touch base on. So just give you that uh, reference um, before he uh, may be able to speak to those things. These four phases, let's face it, the four is southern side uh, with a few amenities over. The phases one, two, and three are the northern side. Yes. Okay. And all these costs that you've come up with, roughly 20 million, have 35 percent, makes about 27 mil, give or take. Right. Plus property acquisition. Right. Whatever that costs. Right. Okay. 
So when we had our number earlier this summer of the 30 to 50, I think, I mean, we're still, we've ground, grounded that out with some of these other projects, I mean, meaning like even mm -hmm. the, um, that 450 feet of element, it had underground storage tanks. You know, I mean, we're not just talking about shifting some things on the surface and adding, you know, some accoutrements, right? We're <laughs> looking sort of at this systematically. The utility costs, I think we've tried to uh, make sure we've thought about that as well because based on the mapping that we have had and, again, where some of these other, um, where your existing utilities are and the notion of having some of that needing to be relocated. It doesn't necessarily have to happen all at once, um, but a good bit of it will. Um, I think that's a big contributor uh, to things. So, uh, in addition. Um, so, Karen, some of these line items, so I'm just picking one at random. Sure. Number three from phase three, removal, removal of streams down the walls for a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going back and angering those in the past projects you've seen? Is that just a finger in it? I, I know we're at high level, right? Is that a finger in the wind kind of guesstimate? Like, how, how tight are these estimates from your perspective? Well, I think when we were looking at sort of what the length of that is, and then the grading that is being done in sort of the first phase, some of that is, take, is happening at that point in time. Mm -hmm. If we're down now in this phase three where some of that has come out in the demolition piece, yeah. and we have more of, I mean, we're counting for the demolition and that grading piece of the existing road at the appropriate time, <laughs> I mean, when the other one starts to get constructed, that that is going to be able to be covered partially in phase one, and then this um, stream channel wall element, depending on if they can use any of that on site or not, mm. but that um, that one would be on the property side, not the road yeah, side. Yeah, that line item as an example. Overall, we're coming up with a swag of 30-ish million dollars. Right. I'm saying, how closely do you guys look? And there's no wrong answer because we're at the level we are. Correct. When you come up with installation of stream at 250,000, how do you get we there? We are looking at projects that have been done in the region. Okay. We have been looking at projects that have been bid and we have unit costs for. <laughs> we do not have a project that is exactly this one. Yeah, right. So the asterisk to what, to my answer to what you're asking is, depending on the true phasing of all of this and the efficiency kinds of things that someone from, um, you know, uh, coming in and bidding is going to be looking at, all right, how can I get, is this bidding for, and it's, I mean, this becomes the, the art to the science piece yeah, of, yeah, yeah. are we going to be using, how much of this can we use on site, keep on site, how much do we have to take off site, all those kinds of things. So we're not at that number, right. but we're trying to uh, look at this, I mean, opinion mm -hmm. of probable ballparking <clears throat> costs so that we can start to think about, all right, what is it that we're able to pursue with dollars that are available, and what are we doing? Yeah. So, well, I, there, I mean, there's clear fine tune to this. We did try to put a 20% contingency to, to answer your question. When we were looking at these kinds of things back in the uh, um, May, June, I mean, April, May, and mm -hmm. uh, June. Okay. Discussions. So. What I hear is this is opinion and probable cost and estimate, a guesstimate. It is. Based upon your history and your knowledge and your background. That is correct. Uh, which is what you're being hired for. That's what's the best opinion. At this stage, that's all you can expect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, and it's, I think the other piece is if this were all done at once, that would be one set of numbers to discuss. Versus we were trying to look at, all right, if this is over time, and we're trying to do like items with yeah. things that we can, where we can work in a certain area and still have other things function or, you know, get ready for the next phase, how can we break these things out? And then think about the contingencies and know that it's 2018 
and the price <coughs> of something that was bid on chain link fence by uh, someone in the contractor, I mean, giving an example, right. like something that was bid at a local level project was, and it was funded with more local level dollars, the unit price on it was $60 a linear foot. When it had other funding sources tied to that, the same product the next year became $120 a linear foot. I, so I think that it's also trying to prepare ourselves for that magnitude and hence the other discussion of um, the in the spring of or the 30 to 50 I mean depending on you know phase one versus how some of these things line up based on their true truly on their funding source um, and requirements for those things will affect those costs we all know that mm -hmm. so I just want to say that so that we're all aware okay again 27 so, roughly 27 mil plus acquisitions 20% excess built in uh, has there been any discussion uh, or opinion as to where funding can be available? So I think what we try to do is on each of these phases look at what the potential sources could be as its first pass. Those are the bulleted items. So these are ones as com in looking at all of the sources that have been compiled through DCNR through DCED through PennDOT and all of those various funds that exist. These are ones when it comes to restoration, conservation of natural resource space, and all I mean, because that's what this is centered on, right? So in making the case, and I think I mean a very logical um, tie to that you are solving a resource need and being able to go after these types of um, avenues uh, is worth you know, consideration. So that, I'm hoping, in part answers what you were thinking about there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but as the council people know, uh, I came to the last meeting and made the suggestion of the bond issue. Uh, and I was using a $33 million figure uh, with a 3.75% interest rate. The bottom line, it comes in to $486 per taxable property in the borough. Per year. It's not going to happen. I know that. It was a good idea, but it's not going to happen. If it was turned out to be 5 or 6 bucks or 10 bucks per property, that would be one thing. But anyway. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you commented also that you wanted to have some responses to Bob's comments. So, Bob, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I, I had no idea Carolyn was going to be here tonight. I'm so glad that she can. Uh, excuse me. Just to repeat what we all know, uh, the cause of the flooding of Bridgeville is primarily for the last 50 years, up to St. Clair and North Park has been building very few retention ponds, if any. And the creek bed uh, is totally, is too narrow. In addition to the three, those uh, three bridges that I think I showed you before. Uh, okay. the, 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 oh, yes, they're right in front of me, excuse me. The, the, it, once again, there was uh, there's, there's a great deal of emphasis on the bridge, the bar or road bridge, because that's where the debris collector, everybody assumed that that was all of the problem. The uh, uh, railroad bridge that I didn't mention to you, Carolyn, they, it has uh, five and a half foot beams, and instead of putting them above the track level, they were below. From the bottom of that bridge, for the creek service, is only seven feet. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be replaced. And the culvert, you know the story on the culvert, that's just... Uh, that idea, but uh, in, in what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is, me, uh, I, you guys are definitely on the, on the right track with Carol's plan. 
to try to um, develop the south side of, of uh, Baldwin Street is certainly uh, the right way to go. But I'm, what I was trying to do, because the cost is so enormous, I'm, I was trying to find ways to design a plan that we could get help from Upper St. Clair and um, Bethel Park to help pay for this because they're partially, I hate to use the word to blame, but that's, that's part of it. And one, one of the reasons, one of the things that I uh, wanted to, wanted you, you and Carol to consider is uh, by adding Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park, had great difficulty getting through Bridgeville to and from I-79. And in addition to solving the, trap, the flooding problem, I thought <clears throat> we might take this opportunity in this quarter, uh, for this is McLaughlin and Road, to, to double the traffic flow. And my, my suggestion was, uh, is, is to just leave Bower Hill Road where it is uh, and widen the crick and the three bridges right up against it to 50 or 60 feet whatever the experts determine will be best. And then keep off, keep our road two lanes, one way, all the way to Bar Hill Road. And coming back uh, uh, from uh, this point here, right by Sill Halls, <coughs> that making, uh, th there's only an eight foot difference in height, by the way, between Bar Hill Road at this point and Baldwin Street, have this down, ramp, whatever you want to call it, and then make this also a two-lane, one-way street going in this direction. The, I think I mentioned this before, these red dots are the streets that Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park used to get through Bridgeville. And what this would do for their traffic problem would be, it would allow Cook School Road, McLaughlin Run, the president coming down from the Bedner Farm, they come down here and so on. I think you might be able to get honest substantial support from those two communities plus Bridgeville to help build something like this. And the other, the other thing I was thinking about was, excuse me, uh, I, it bothers me, even though you might have to do it, to take a 300, a potential 300 car, car space between where, wherever the crook bed is and, uh, and Baldwin Street to not transfer it into Parking. I know that Carol mentioned to me that these the new buildings, when they are built, would be built on on piers. The, 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 a lot of the uh, parking yeah, would be underneath the buildings. I understand that. I just thought that having uh, a street level or, or a store entrance level uh, 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 parking would be a better way to go. Yeah, and to keep in mind. For a hundred years, when people drove down by the road to Bridgeville, there was no place for any of the consumers to buy anything. When they, when they looked to the right, there was a steep hillside. There are only two businesses from that point. One's an ice cream shop and the borough building. What I'm suggesting is to run, excuse me, to run the, 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 the 15,000 cars a day, if that's what it is, that's, that'll stay the same. But that you can also run 50,000 cars back the other way in front of a bunch of stores that generate tax revenues. And uh, I think that's, uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, I'd like you to, excuse me. Oh, oh one other thing. Um, the, uh, the, the, using the, what we all consider a very valuable uh, business district, which was once the original business district in Bridgeville. Uh, I, it seems an extravagant, using this area as a floodplain, seems sort of extravagant. I think by the, uh, and, I, and you're more familiar with the you know, 5,000 cubic feet of water a second, how fast it might fill it up. But uh, I think I mentioned this to you before, about a fifth of a mile north of Bridgeville, on McLaughlin Run, there's that area, you know, where the electrical uh, power unit is on the left, right across the street, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a 22 acre area that uh, that would substantially uh, hold water, excuse me, hold water back for a great minute, for an hour, let's say, or it would, it would substantially cushion the rate of flow of water into the bridge. That's something you, know, you, you have to, have to uh, uh, 
calculate. And the only other thing I was questioning was, what you say? oh, here again, uh, the, the zigging and the zagging over, what is that, a five, is that one? That's more than 500 feet, in the, like from a block and run, uh, I don't say a thousand feet or whatever. It's, it's fine. What uh, about uh, from a block from a block from, from the intersection from a block and run intersection down to the down to the bar okay, river. Okay, about twenty five hundred. About uh, uh, twenty five hundred feet. <clears throat> and what I was getting at was I don't know if the zigging and the zagging truly would would help. I think we should concentrate on making sure that the creek bed is more than wide enough. That those two bridges are more than long enough to just e evacuate the thing. And also, as Carol mentioned, uh, the, the, the engineer, the, the engineers that I've talked to, mentioned that much of the problem is uh, you have a 90 degree angle here, the water comes under the Baldwin Street Bridge, you have a nine, 90 degree left here, but this, uh, right, the, right behind the ice cream place, the water. It was like a nozzle that night, and I'm sure the other nights, it wasn't even going down the creek bed. It was squirting straight across towards Steel Bill and the pet shop, and all those buildings to the north of that point were flooded by Carroll Street. Anyway, that's my proposal. I'm trying to get somehow draw commercial advantage to Bridgeville and the transportation advantages to our neighbors. And uh, uh, and create another business district that might even be come could become better and uh, more tax productive than our central business district. Carolyn, you talked uh, well, we have one woman here who talked about the next degree ban mm -hmm. at uh, Commercial Street. Mm -hmm. uh, is there even though you're talking about now a 60 foot wide culvert bridge, if you will? Right. Is there any way that that 90 degrees is going to be reduced? Well, I think if, I mean, there's a big uh, challenge with, I'm just going to say, I'm looking at page five, but um, the end, the southern end of the building that exists between commercial and, between railroad, the railroad and Union Street. Mm -hmm. The building on the left, that's the white. Mm -hmm. uh, the silver. Yeah, yeah. That's the silver. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, meaning versus the right side. But that is the closest point to any of the road right of way. And so the width of and mm -hmm. curve that you're talking about in terms of the creek, that that is where we would have to be re uh, or designing any of that curve to work. It's either going to help us or it's not mm -hmm. in terms of its location. Well, I just the, as, a, the, as a point the, the of geometry, I'm just the sixty foot culvert that we're talking about at that intersection. So here's the to first scale. Okay. On the same drawing, mm -hmm. the road, the gray road, mm -hmm. is approximately 24 feet. If you take roughly three of those side by side, that is about as wide as the green area, just to 72 yeah. feet. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a 60 foot to 70 foot bed to hold. So we're working with that's at the minimum on the left on the west side. And we get wider to that on the east side. So the point about this 50 or 60 or whatever dimension this bridge discussion goes next in a couple of weeks, with that as a reference, that almost that entire intersection where Bower Hill and Union yeah, and, and Railroad all come together would need to almost be structural, I mean, to have the water go through it, that entire intersection. Because that's the only way that any of that water is also going to get around the corner of that building. The bridge is going to be stable if it goes down slower. Right. And, I mean, the, the pinch of where Commercial Street is 
right this one mm -hmm. and where the structures are coming out of that bend is really the, the point the pinch that remains yeah. right now they're just shoved right through those two little culverts there mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a 60 foot culvert, you're talking about a 72 feet. foot wide holding area. I don't even think it's 60 feet. Am I right? That's what you were talking about. No, it, it is not. It is 30. It's saying, we're saying from a perspective of to keep it moving, yeah. Yeah. that it, if it were to be twice as big as it yeah. is. Yeah. Just from a numbers standpoint. Because yeah, it's 30 now, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. And you're talking about double yeah. 60, right? Right. Right. right? And therefore, and the 72 foot holding area, the green area you're referring to on page On the five, western end, right. Uh, that that would hold water and permit it to go out at a slower rate. So, so the design, the, the right, bed. right, so the design of having width down here, and I think that's also this, this point where we can be, I mean, I can understand comments of constructive criticism to this area here, but this notion of what happens now with the ball field below and how that can be step one and that green light keep being green, so that can be a check. And then if we need to have one in here, so that by the time we get to here, we're sorry, to where by the time we get to the culvert area. area, there is some possible management mm -hmm. of releasing it to get to that culvert. I mean, it's I'm not saying it is it fast between point in the south and point in the central, but being able to control that I, is really part of this other piece of the science. Right, and we also talked to the DEP. And your trash collecting. The trash, and we talked to them about the trash collector, and we also talked to them about the back channel, and how the back channel doesn't work, the weir doesn't work, and there needs to be, it doesn't just need to be um, rid of the sediment, but there needs to be a project back there that it needs to be opened up, the channel needs to be opened up, a block and run needs to be opened up, and there are grants for that. So we're, we're going to um, do a comprehensive um, plan for that and apply for grants for that because that's why that raises back there and collects everything because everything stops. Back channel doesn't work anymore, and there's no way for a block and run. You can't even see. You can't even see where McLaughlin Run goes. You can't see it. It's just <coughs> woods. So that's another issue. When it gets down there, it just dies. So, so I understand it. There's also an upcoming meeting with Bethel, Upper St. Clair, and Bridgeville. Yeah, the engineers and the managers. Well, September 26th. Six, whatever date it is. Yeah. Uh, any indication from them of any kind of help on this? Well, we're all going to meet. And hopefully we'll, we won't fight and uh, um, try to work together to get something done with the watershed. I mean, it, it, it's a whole watershed that, I mean, we can do what we're doing here, but if everybody doesn't do their part in the whole watershed, what we're doing is never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's the beginning of us trying to talk and see what we are all going to do collectively. So, so now, Bob, you know, Bob, you've been about for St. Clair being a part of the problem. Uh, and of course, they had their own damages coming out of this, too, on yes, the uh, But nowhere near the kind of damage we did. You know, our, our, our engineer, Jeff Sykes, uh, mentioned to me before the last council meeting, we had a chance to talk about it. He mentioned he, he agrees about the need for Upper Slim Clear and Bethel and Bridgeville people to pay for whatever the engineers decide to solve the problem. He said that uh, uh, Mount Lebanon and Whitehall already assess each home in their municipalities for flood control. It's like 50 or or $100 uh, 
per home or per, per family or something. In Bridgeville, there's only about 1,800 homes or something. However, when you're talking about getting help like that, with that coefficient from Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park, you're talking about a great deal of money that they might not object to. If you can attract... Well, we have, I know we have 2,350 taxable properties, real estate taxable yeah, right. property in Bridgeville. Uh, anyway, then Blue's climbing. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were saying that you were going to respond to some things. Of right. So I think are. from a perspective of the culvert coordination and sort of the structural bridge piece, that is, and that being uh, the 10th of, of, thank you, of September, this is super timely and getting that sort of coordinated for this northern end. Because what I see happening is the coordination for that, the um, length of projects, I mean, detail, I mean, just the engineering piece to all of that is going to be pretty significant. And that's sort of concurrent to what would be happening down at the ball field end of things. Um, why the design for the bridge that would be on a relocated Bower Hill prior to you getting to the traffic circle or adjacent to the traffic circle. I think there is merit in the borough talking at that meeting mm -hmm. about that kind of structure too. Mm -hmm. Because if there can be in the design of that <coughs> western end some play into what happens on the eastern end near the traffic, near the turnaround. Um, I think there's an economy issue. I mean, meaning there's economy of savings potential of looking at the design of those two collectively. Mm -hmm. Is what that was my concern. As far as as far as not putting something there that exists for now, but putting something there that exists for the future. Correct. Yeah, right. I mean, because with the road realignment. That has to get rebuilt right. anyway. So, but right. I'm saying on the 10th, there's the opportunity, I think a clear opportunity, to have discussion about that bridge in the same um, frame. Yeah, same so, context. Uh, yeah, in the same context, and because I think that could go a long way in terms of some cost mm -hmm. realization. In your it, and it, even it, just the scale of putting sorry one more the scale of even construction. I mean, having those two things. I know that's sort of a nightmare of timing for people, but at the same time, one's gonna reality on constructing a culvert. Bob kind of hit it on the nail with the railroad bridge. Yeah. I think your only alternative would be to take the, about a third of Sewell's building out. Yeah. And just make a straight shot, and then build a new railroad bridge away from the bridge that's currently there. Because you're, I you're, you're mention, like, never going to have enough money to take that, even though there's two trains a day. You're never going to have enough money to replace. Just take the bridge out and replace it. And I, I think you could replace it while the traffic, if you built a new one down the. I I think that has some. And then problems. you could probably do something. To improve soils, um, ingress and egress Correct. out of there. Right. But right. I think the only way that's going to work is to take the old building halfway down. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys keep, excuse me for interrupting again, but you guys keep referring to the culvert. It can't be a culvert any longer. It's got to be made a bridge, mm -hmm. just yeah. like. Well, well I call it a yeah. culvert. Yeah. Like you're talking yeah. to 60 foot yeah. wide structure. Yeah. 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 The only way yeah. you're going to fit that yeah. in. Is to go I through that door. I mean, exactly. why was the reference then, of why we're and then you could put a railroad bridge in. I think while the railroads which would cut the, the bend down to maybe fifty or fifty five percent of a dirt bend. Yes. Oh, you yeah, have you we, have hardly any bend. Okay, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Said, if somebody came, excuse me, if somebody came in right now and said, "Here's thirty three million free," how long would this project take on the northern side? The northern side or the southern side? I'm sorry. Northern side. Just forget phase four, but everything else. Oh, the northern side of the road. Sorry, I was thinking northern. No, northern Sir, side of the road. Northern. I agree. Uh, you have donated some money, John? You're a 
Everything's required. Go, do. The design part would be a couple. Well, your original was four to five years. Mm -hmm. and we had it. Just as a note, we've already talked to the owners of the property adjacent to the bridge, and they are conducive to if we have to take any of that property, they are absolutely fine. Yeah. Right. So, I think there's some long term. Um, Shining, that is, yes, possible. Yes. yes, Bruce. The suggestion, this eliminates some of the problems since you got to acquire Sill Hall's building, his property there to make a 60 foot wide thing, eliminate the commercial street altogether as far as the culvert, the bridge, and everything. Come around through Sill Hall's property, come back, go across the tracks. You, then you, don't, you, you can make the nice bend going around the corner. And I shared this with her after the last meeting, and you could, it's going to cost a minimum of a million dollars with that 60 foot span. If you're going 60 foot, you're going to probably be $2 million. It'd be to line everything up the roads, spiral, the whole bit. You need Sill Hall's building, the, the storage building along there. If you acquire that, go back. Put a road back in and then come in on you right, Street. right. Well, come in around where your building is. Come across the tracks where they used to go. Or you could even go down to the end of commercial and then come across. Well, you got the fire truck. The biggest thing is the fire well, trucks and delivery trucks. I think trucks. You, you'd have to improve Union Street. Yeah, it would definitely help. Um, I think the traffic flow. Yeah, it would eliminate. It would eliminate an intersection coming on the viral road virtually and then it would eliminate the the trouble of trying to make that bend because you now have the property that the bridge is on and everything else to make your sixty degree bend instead of a ninety degree bend. Yeah, but when we you put the but when you put the culvert in whether you're sixty foot, I mean you still have to deal with the railroad. Uh, right. yeah. right. And and you're putting all the infrastructure in. And then at that point does it make any sense to go a different direction. Yeah, the railroad, the railroad yeah. could be the yeah. next one you have to pursue it, it, as far as them stepping up to the plate. And, oh, trust me, they don't have any money. Yeah, yeah well, that's what they all say. <laughs> trust me, no, I, that I know for a fact. It really does. Keep, keep going with what you've got, though. But okay. that would eliminate, one, us spending $2 million for a bridge that's got to go back in there. Mm -hmm. It would give us the width of you're talking 60 feet because you can't go towards the viral road side. Correct. You have to go to the eastern side or northern, northern side. Northern side. Northern. Yeah. So you have to take Sill build part of Sill building anyhow. And it I don't want to belittle his building or anything like that, but finally after all these years he's fixing it up and now you want to tear it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the same time it, it's it's not somebody's houses. It's not. Oh, you know, I thought about something similar. Yeah, and just and you can come back because they used to run cement trucks back over on your side for 20 years, dumping concrete back in there for steel building. And that, I mean, if you make an, an intersection going across there, that would be very doable as far as cost wise. I don't know what Sill Halls would want, but you you don't even need all of this building. Uh, he cut his hardware store and everything else on that side. He, you know that can all stay there. It, it, the problem is if you but he have to line the intersections if up. If you so. put a road through his property, then you <coughs> stopped him from doing his part. business. Yeah, with the the trucks and the, the concrete trucks in the back. Yeah, but you're, now you have a road and they can go right into his parking lot, and um, he can. Uh, it, but. As you were saying about Union Street, if you're coming down Bluff and you're coming Union and, and uh, down uh, Liberty, to line that all up, you might have to take the end of his building. Well, I mean, if we're going to be a problem because it wasn't built for that kind of traffic. Right. You know, you keep in mind that you're dealing with consumer motorists who support the businesses in the community and making it difficult for them to get to our storefronts of businesses 
is going to hurt us. The traffic flow coming down Barber Road is going to generally. Well, Bob, I'm going to Barber Road, road the subject. Uh, okay. You, you have to do something with Barber Road because the hillside's coming down and the wall is falling that, down. That's, that's no problem. Well, what, okay, what well, well, well yeah. having said that, yeah. uh, Mike, you had your hand up. Did you want to say anything? No, I was saying. Okay, it. fine. Uh, Pat, you said you wanted to say something? Yes, a number of things. Oh, oh that's bad. <laughs> Bruce, what if you went, what if we continue to go even further? Why not relocate the creek onto the Silva property? If you, if you continue, now just, just follow it through. Instead of going under the railroad and then under Commercial Street to go next to Steel Belt and Carroll, don't go under either of them, creating new channel using the Soho property, which is, and again, no disrespect to Ted Teodori and, you know, and, 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 uh, and Silhols, but it's a cement plant in the middle of an urban environment. It's not really one of the gems of our community. Again, no disrespect to a good, thriving business and one of the you know, the largest contributors to our borough. But ultimately, it would dramatically change the, the, uh, the tenor of our community if we could take that creek through the Soho property to the back channel. Parallel to the railroad. Parallel to the railroad. Not ever going under the railroad, not ever going under Commercial Street. Parallel it down. Now, you might be able to continue to have Soho exist, you may not, I don't know, this is just, I'm, I'm leaping on to, to Bruce's idea and just taking it the next step further. Any, I'm, I'm curious as to Carolyn's. Right. Yeah, you're right, I mean, it crosses somewhere, but it could be way back behind a fire. No, no, I'm saying it never crosses. Yeah, it would continue all the way down to the church. Yeah. 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 There is a small, there's a, yeah, there's a small creek right now that we don't notice. If you go on the Silhol property, there's a small creek that comes down and carries the water to the back channel. Well, again, why not take a look and see if we could use that small creek to be the new McLaughlin run, eliminating the whole need to, to, to deal with the railroad, which I know Lori would love to deal with the railroad some more. <laughs> but you, can, you completely eliminate dealing with the railroad. You can completely eliminate talking about widening the culvert because you're no longer going under commercial. Taking a straight shot to the back channel. Okay. It's, it's, you still need a large radius turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, you, and you still have your large yeah. radius yeah. Yeah. as you come yeah. under. You're no longer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's you've, okay. you've solved your yeah. bend problem as well. You made your, anything else? Oh, lots of that. I, that, was, that was just brand new to the table. So, uh, Carolyn? Yeah, I'm just looking at the map to follow along mm -hmm. with what you're saying. Yeah, and, and the question that, that you can't see from, from Google Earth is, is the elevations. That's the key. So, uh, Carolyn, from a, from a where we are, um, council uh, last year took the bold step of retaining your services uh, thanks to, uh, to John uh, for phases, I believe, two and three uh, of the plan, of, of your work. Mm -hmm. um, are, where are you in those phases? Are, are you at the conclusion of something, in the middle of something? I think we are giving the final product to the borough so they can use them as part of their to September 10th and 25th discussions. That's this package, because we've call out the um, potential for the funding sources and then those okay. dollars. So from a perspective... You're down to the end of item three Yes. with this. Right. Uh, and therefore we are at a point when since some council people are here of realizing costs and overview, etc. to what you have been requested to do right. and you're being paid to do. Mm -hmm. So it's the end of three. Right. From that point on, it's back now to council. We're anticipate we were anticipating right that you as planning commission would be ready for us to go to council. I mean go to the 
borough staff so that they can have the information at the council meeting down for these September discussions. That was our uh, hope so that you guys can get things for this southern project as you started that last Thursday for the ball field and then the northern project for sort of these alignments of where mm -hmm. the creek and the roads are coming out of this central area. So, yes. For us, the yeah. council, this is, excuse me, this is me that we would have to motion that part of one, two, and three, at least. Mm -hmm. We don't go any further than three, as you, as you discussed mm -hmm. many times. We are in a tent of a tree over here. And the only thing that bothers me here, the $30 million, which is including the motion, it, that work, it's a bunch of cost, if we do it right now. To present like this to council a $30 million project is a lot of study to be mm -hmm. to control. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous for us to do so, but that's what we're here for. To recommend council now, the old one, two, and three, and that will include all the expenses and everything. That includes the $30 million as well. Mm -hmm. No question, the whole complex. As I say, it is kind of ridiculous, but, but that's, it is what it is. We as a planning commission have been challenged to get down to sure. item three, which we have by virtue of this. Right. Uh, the item four becomes the final plan. Well, that can't occur until it's a go. Yes. Uh, by four, five, six, and seven here. It can't occur until it's a go. We have done our what? Yeah, we have done, done our work. Job. Now, I think with the uh, a few other things coming through, <coughs> the price will will be reduced a little bit. You know, out of thirty million dollars, you reduce a couple million dollars or five million dollars. It's nothing. Okay, but we'll reduce some of that cost. But still, you look in that, and, and, and I echo your, your speech to council. Yeah, uh, we, can, we, we can have a bond of that $30 million, which by the time you pay, that's $60 million. I never forget when Dell told me we could do anything we want. We use like, this world as a credit card. We can't work like that. We can't work in, in, in municipality. Like a Virginia credit card. But, anyways. We took a 30 plus property acquisition. Hey, but that's that's the 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 so, the so I think, yeah. Yeah. if I may interject I think we'll, we were also trying to identify as part of this set of numbers is there are some funding sources that are small scale. And there are some funding sources that are larger scale to pursue. And a majority of what we were trying to call out were in the context of the grant end. I mean, some of it is loans, but I mean, it depends on what the nature of the, the project is. So from a perspective of the, we all know that there's a timing to some of those in terms of uh, the application as well as the potential amount of time to spend those dollars and being able to get that phased in. So we're trying to think about each of sort of these potential mm -hmm. phases of work where there was uh, some logical pursuit to go after those matching monies. So that, I mean, while we're talking about uh, eight figures, right, that a number of these could have the opportunity to even be used as match. And that's, I think, where this next set of discussions with the borough um, and its neighbors at the end of the month, and then having some energy from that meeting, if it's then you know, talking with Harrisburg about what are ways, I mean, you're, I mean the regional representatives, but then ultimately looking at from a perspective of how these things could line up in Harrisburg for solving a watershed matter, 
right? Yes. And you are you are the ones that are taking the bull by the horns in that phrase and um, helping solve a regional issue. And I think with the momentum that you can gain in those discussions that I think other people are going to be able to I mean, you solely as a borough have taken this this far and that is awesome and that should not be minimized in any way I think when you're looking at what you're doing and the meetings that are now coming up even with the county and that you mm -hmm. you know been able to make this so that so that I guess what I'm getting at is the $30 million associated with some of these costs is going to require a set of commitments that you're going to need to make in order to spend those dollars. But I think that based on the emphasis of solving this, this resource matter, this natural resource and life safety matter, there are so many things that you can hit in terms of um, these kinds of funding pursuits that it's going to be what percentage would you expect another point ninety nine point okay so it's it's not a percentage it's a number we we don't have to get into the details of that we know that but we 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 heard so many other plans here that and that and that and that and that when we so whatever the the ideas from public we heard at this point that's not going to be implemented at all once we recommend the council this one here then you have to do an alteration and all that bring the carol again and blah blah blah, blah and do again the new the new we got to make up our mind first where we at before we recommend anything that is so many other ideas behind the seal hall thing we've been talking about in council, we've been talking about in a bar where, where we drink it. So it's nothing new, but it's not implemented on one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of the idea. Mr. Fry's idea is not over there. Mm -hmm. Capetta's idea is not over there. Yeah, so what do we do here? Exactly when do we right. stop here with our advisor? Where we stop? That's very important. We make a start, but we make a recommendation. Thank you. That's exactly the, all, all those ideas, they go away too. Mm. Too further, you know. Or could be down the road. Could be that. Absolutely. Thank but you. Do we, you understand what I'm coming from. Do we make a recommendation to put dollar one towards this, knowing there's two to four million dollars of cost of property acquisition out there that's a predecessor to any of this starting that hasn't been funded yet? I mean, we can make a recommendation that says this plan is solid whenever you're ready to finance it. But yeah. let's not look past the fact that there's a yeah, multi-year yeah. investment to acquire properties to even start 95% of what's here. Sure. I don't know if we owe a recommendation on the land or you guys are handling it as council outside of anything we put forward. But especially if there are things tied to timing, sure, we'll fund you. You have to spend it a calendar year 19. We're not going to be ready to do that. So I don't want to lose sight of the fact either that there's a huge upstream contingency before we can even crack the door on getting started. Thank you. Yeah, and in the meantime, we've already spent thirty-nine grand plus your hours. Right. You know, to you, thirty-nine eight sixty-two uh, plus your hours. So, do we have a pack you? I've already finished this up before we get back to go ahead. Okay. Um, I uh, one of the items that uh, the people have been asking about, and I am reluctant, but I'm going to hand it to Carolyn. This is Carolyn's spreadsheet. I've added on some calculations on property values north, north side of Baldwin Street, south side of Baldwin Street. I did it quickly, so I'm not comfortable that it's correct at this point. I'm going to send you guys the spreadsheet that it's derived from. It just gives some, some more information on what the land value, the building value, the potential 2018 tax revenues are for all of the properties that we've been talking about. I've got some abandoned properties that I know should have zero numbers in them, and so there are some corrections to this. Mm -hmm. But I figured it's a start. Um, and again, you know, I have not double checked it at this point, but I figured I'd give it to you. Because in conversations amongst us, people keep asking the same number. And one of the things I may be able to help with is some numbers. So I'll zing out the spreadsheet as well. What are they? Hmm? What are they? 
What's on your spreadsheet? Tell us. What's the total uh, question? What the total uh, uh, set value for the north side of uh, of uh, Baldwin Street is what? Uh, That's to acquire the property. Two million, roughly two million. Yeah, the, the assessed value. It's not to acquire the property, it's a number. It's no more right or wrong or different than any of the other numbers we've been talking about here tonight. Yeah, it's a number. If you add up all the county assessments. Yeah, there's county assessments on the northern side of Baldwin, yeah. West Bower Hill, the affected properties on this. Yeah, I didn't include the Bower Hill, but I did include the. 2,950,000. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and you've uh, done, I think you added it up as well. I just, we we added that up in one of the meetings that came yeah. around. Right. Three and a half million. I figured I'd provide it in, uh, you know, in some form. Yeah. 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 Depending on whether you add Bower Hill Road in or don't, yeah, again, my suggestion about, would We talk about property values before and after now. Yeah. Where's the property values down oh, yeah. now as compared to June 19th? Oh, well, clearly, and you look at some of them, um, one of them one of them sold a year or two ago for like, way less than the assessed value. It didn't get reassessed. Okay. This is... Well, and, and oh. bottom line is... is if, if the borough of Bridgeville isn't in the business of buying houses, we, we can't buy houses. If we start to buy houses, then we're going to have to buy Joe Smith's house up on Missouri Avenue because he couldn't sell his house. Yeah. And uh, he can't get a buyer, so we bought Joe Brown's house down on Baldwin Street because he couldn't get a buyer for his house, so why, why can't why aren't we buying the guy up on Missouri Missouri Avenue's house? We can't start buying houses. Well, we did. No, we, we did. Oh, we we have, bought that one right over there, and we bought it because we, bought we thought it for us. Yes, we bought it for us because not to any develop that. We, not to develop it because it Thank is you. property adjacent to our building that we're going to use for our mm -hmm. use. Whenever we get money to use it, whether it be for our parking mm -hmm. or whether it be to yes. expand our building. Right. For us. For us. Not because he didn't Not have a buyer. Not because he didn't have a buyer. But because we wanted we the property needed it for us. because it was us. two for, inches from our building. Right. For us as a community. Yes. Exactly. So the bottom and line is the FEMA hazard mitigation <clears throat> program is mm -hmm. the way we're going to have to go for the houses on Baldwin Street. And doesn't the FEMA hazard mitigation program, what is it, who is required under that program to purchase the property? The FEMA purchased the property. The borough of Bridgeville has to apply, but FEMA purchase the property, purchases the property. FEMA sends appraisers mm -hmm. down to the property, and FEMA purchases the property. Mm -hmm. The property has to be torn down and the property has to stay green space in perpetuity. Right. And who and who had, who ends up owning the property? We probably end up owning the property, but we do not purchase the property. It is not our funds it, it, it. Exactly. It's not our it's not Bridgeville money. No. But in the end of the day, Bridgeville has the property for us as a community. Right. For so, us as a community so that people don't continue right. to get boat rides out of their bedroom. Right. So, um. It's part of the project there. Right. And right. So, that's the difference as far as that goes. Okay. And, you know, what has to happen with that is that, that, that process has to start happening. When, it, when will it start happening? As soon as I get time or some help to start doing it. So um, I have people now asking me when is it going to start happening and first and foremost there has to be a declaration in the state not necessarily in the county but in the state by FEMA there has to be a declaration um, of emergency in the state so I don't even know if we're eligible right now to apply. But um, um, that that's what needs to happen first. Okay. So. Uh, we gotta cut you off. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but it's 820 and the mind can only absorb what the bladder can endure. So <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, dear council or dear commission folks, do you want to go forward right now or do you want to put this off for another one? Well, to go forward is to submit. That would change. Not a month or two or three. That would change. Unless you could start incorporating all these other ideas. That's right. Then it'll change. That's right. But even six months from now, it's still the same. That's right. <laughs> So now or later, we recommend the council we put that on the left. And you probably need to decide what more you want to incorporate. It, thank you. That's right. Do you know what I mean? As far as do you know what I mean, Carolyn? Uh, if they want to incorporate, I'm going to ask this one, if I may. Sure. The notions of or the outcomes of the meetings on the 10th and the 25th of September, to me are ones, I think, that have evolved over the last X number of weeks, weeks, X number of weeks, to see about, I, I guess what I'm getting at is, if there's going to be this northern piece, this northern area, I think you've, last Thursday, you got the ball rolling on the southern area, which is on the ball field, and it's, to me, it's just a matter of, from this report, if it is, and having accompanying chapters or reports for those other areas, and that at some point it's going to just be pulled together. Because if I may say to your comment about there's still a couple, I mean, this element of this acquisition, mm -hmm. to I'm agreeing with there's there are two years of drawings and permitting and all that kind of stuff that can be can, uh, simultaneous to those other things going on. Mm -hmm. And so having it, um, having the discussions from September inform possibly some of the possibilities of these uh, other areas, mm -hmm. I see is an impact. But other than that, I see those areas evolving as sort of, these are like three chapters of northern, central, and southern, and seeing how those come together, and sort of, in some well, ways, why, Jim, why don't we delay this motion uh, uh, idea, absolutely, and give it Carol? I, I don't know, whatever date you're meeting with the other municipalities. Yes, it will be proud. 25th, or what day of the month uh, is that, do you know? Tuesday. It's a, a 27th. It's a Tuesday. So our normal meeting would be the Monday night the before table. this. Let's put off until you have that meeting. And then perhaps we can meet the first Monday of October, uh, which would be still a week before your council yeah. meeting. So you got to just put together a conceptual plan for us as council. Uh, exactly. We're not, you're, we're, you're not giving us a bottom line, this is what you have to do. <laughs> it, it's conceptual and it's, it's going to be in phases. Right. The phases below. The final road bridge and everything, it, it can be another phase of what we're doing. But we're at the phase between Fire Road Bridge and the the McLaughlin Run Baldwin Street Bridge. It's like a okay. it's like a comprehensive plan. Right. Exactly. It, it's, it's 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 all gonna be in phases. It's, yeah, it's a guideline. Right. And and that's what we and that that's not etched in stone. It's a conceptual one. That's idea. exactly right. right. And it gets right. down to you guys as council. Ask us to do a job. Right. We've done it. Here it is. Yeah, it is. You, you've done. You've done that phase of. It. Yeah. Right. Now in future phases, you guys will be will that be asked to do. Rough for new phase phase five, four, yeah. four and on four five six seven. You have to guys say, okay, we're going to spend the money. We're going to do it. And when we apply for money to move forward with these preliminary phases, we need to have a comprehensive plan to go along with the application. So we'll have that in this plan. And with the September meetings, with the meeting that you had on Thursday, last week, mm -hmm. four days ago, and then the meeting, the two meetings that you're having in September, mm -hmm. you will have 
that Cochrane's plan, essentially. The work you were tasked to do has helped precipitate the two other bookends of this. Mm -hmm. And you now, within a six week period, are addressing those two bookends. And we can fold that into this so that when it goes to the council, and council is able to say, all right, and here is our comprehensive plan, grant applicant, you know, grantor, we have, you are not faced with the questions of, well, why didn't you think about up and down? Because you have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't see us having a meeting on September 24th. Right. Uh, until you guys meet with the other municipalities and the engineer on the 25th. Are you okay with the first one? In? I need to confirm if I can make it. I, I, I'm okay with getting it so that you guys can okay. move on it. I'll send an email out. Um, the suggestion isn't to skip September altogether, it's just to move it back one week. Yeah. Yeah. Move back one week, I think it's first. Yeah. October 1st. Yeah. No. I'll confirm when the order is free. Okay. And then I'll send an email. Can you hear that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. So,